Hello again, it's our second installment of Radical or Exponential Form. Basically what I did was I have the same problem out twice, and I'll go ahead and read it. I have the fifth root of x over y squared, and that's in radical form. And I have x to the one-fifth over y to the two-fifths. Now let me just go ahead and say something really quickly. If you're trying to simplify in the end, you usually put it in radical form. You don't usually put it in exponential form. So that's something that you have to uh, keep, uh, or be aware of, pardon me. Now when I look at this problem and I give this problem to my students, um, they don't like either. Uh, they think this one's a little bit more intimidating, but when you show approaches on how to solve it, they don't find it so bad. Uh, this one nobody really seems to like no matter what. Let me go ahead and rewrite this one really quickly. This is the fifth root of x over fifth root of y squared. Now no matter which way you write it, the problem is that your denominator is not rationalized, i.e. that you have a uh, fractional exponent in your denominator. You, know, you can look at it as you know, fifth root of y squared or you can look at it as y to the two fifths. It doesn't matter. Your y has to be whole. You know, y to the second, y to the first, y to the third, y to the fourth. It can't be, it can't be a, a fraction. So I'm looking at this and I say, well, which one's easier? And what I do is I say, I teach this one instead. I don't really focus on this. I'll go ahead and show it really quickly afterwards. But I, I focus on this one, and I hope that my students find that actually somewhat favorable. Now here's the thing. I've got y to the two-fifths in the denominator. I've got x to the one-fifth in the numerator. If I want to make y whole, if I want a uh, exponent on that y, but I don't want it to be a fractional exponent, I have to think about what I have to multiply in the denominator and the numerator in order to make that whole. Well, what's really cool about putting this in exponential form is, I can do that relatively easily, what do I have to multiply y by in order to have it have a uh, uh, integer x? Um, integer value as a, actually I should say a natural number as a exponent. Well, I've got y to two fifths. Two fifths plus what is going to be five fifths? Well, three fifths. And students say, you can do that? Yeah. y to the two fifths times y to the three fifths is y to the five fifths. And then here's where you have to say, hold on, I don't understand this. I mean, how do you actually know that? And then I show them this problem. Well, what's y squared times y to the third? And they said, oh, it's y to the fifth. How did you get that? He said, well, I added it. Okay, well, two-fifths plus three-fifths is, like, oh, five-fifths. That makes sense. I'm like, okay, good. But you can't just multiply the denominator by y to the three-fifths magically and hope that everything works out well. What you do on the bottom of an expression or the denominator of an expression, you have to do in the numerator of an expression. So I'm going to do that as well. Now what happens is y to the two-fifths times y to the three-fifths is y to the five-fifths. And this is just x to the one-fifth times y to the three-fifths. Different basis, so I can't multiply the exponent, I can't add the exponents together. Let's not simplify the numerator just yet. It's x to the one-fifth times y to the three-fifths. y to the five-fifths is y to the 1, or just y. Woo. Okay, that's good. Uh, can, I, can I divide the y to the 3 fifths and y to the you know, first? Yeah, you could, but you'd just be starting back over here. You don't want to do that. What you want to do now is put this in radical form. Notice that they both have a 5 in the denominator, which means they're both underneath the fifth root. And it's x to the first. You don't need to put x to the first. You can just put x and y to the third. And it's all over y. And believe it or not, you actually did simplify it. You uh, got rid of fractional exponents in the denominator. Some people look at this and they say, this is garbage. I mean, I like it better when it looked like this. Yeah, 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 but that's how you simplify it. You can use the same approach here. What I tell my students is, and they don't really understand it, they just kind of like memorize it and just buy into it. You say, okay, I've got a 2 here, I need a 5 total. So what do I have to do? I say, oh, uh, 3. I'm like, yep. Yeah. And it's under the fifth root. But what I do in the denominator, I do in the numerator. So it's fifth root of y to the third. In that case, since they're both under the fifth root, you can write them as 1, radical. It's x, y to the third, over fifth root of y squared times fifth root of y to the third is 
y to the fifth inside with a fifth root on the outside, which means the cancel. I'm left with y. Now students say, well, I mean, this one was easier. No, it was easier because I sat there and I did it for you. Uh, in terms of trying to comprehend what's going on, I think this way is actually easier. And you know, but you give the problem to the students and you ask them to do it either way. And if they don't write it in their notes or they don't practice, they're not going to get it anyway. So that's the whole point. So you pick a method that you like and you end up doing it. But you have to take your notes and you have to listen to your teacher and you have to do that stuff. But uh, personally, when it comes to my understanding, I like this way. Yeah, I would do it this way too because it's short. But then again, you know, I'm a math teacher, so of course I'm going to know, you know how to do it quickly like that. But, if, but in terms of trying to understand what's going on, this way is really cool. It's my opinion on that, but yeah. So with that said, I hope you found that at least somewhat helpful. Have a good day for now. Goodbye.